Hi, my name is Reed Silvern. The name of the show is Fed Pride. And the reason it's called Fed Pride is because I'm a federal worker and proud of it. I'm retired. And, uh, uh, of course, I am my own engineer. Uh, I really appreciate the Access Tucson people setting up my shot, making sure that everything is all hunky-dory and perfect, uh, which it is. And I will provide a spin of the earth, a little... Uh, uh, wrenching over there. Let's find America again. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, because I'm my own engineer, uh, if anything goes wrong, this is live to tape, uh, it will go wrong in front of you. Just as I uh, changed and put on my titles and took off my titles and uh, spun the earth in an awkward way, it proves that this is a show that uh, while the access people are tremendously professional, I myself am not, and uh, this reflects it. So uh, what is the big deal going on? First of all, for me today, it's the 10th of December. And uh, in Washington, the big story is that there's a lame duck Congress going on. Uh, there's a big conflict between the president and the Republicans over uh, extension of the Bush tax cuts. Uh, the Republicans are also doing their best, as they uh, said, uh, especially uh, uh, Boehner, the uh, new, or he will be the new after January, uh, Speaker of the House, uh, that their number one issue, their number one aim is to get rid of uh, Obama and to do their best to make sure that Obama does not govern well. And they seem to be coming off to a very, very good start. So uh, what is the issue? What's been going on? A uh, little bit of context. Of course, this show is going to be on for three weeks. And I'm not coming back to do another show until after uh, New Year's. So uh, the bottom line of the whole thing is that uh, whatever I talk about is going to be incredibly obsolete. And I solve this problem by making the show as dry and boring uh, with uh, dry topics whenever possible that are true over a period of weeks and weeks and weeks. So uh, the exciting, amazing, shocking things that are going on in this particular moment uh, will be old and tired. And uh, the boring things that I talk about will still be fresh. So uh, it's a uh, bad philosophy, but it's the philosophy that I use in this show. So uh, the big conflict is on taxes and the budget. Now, uh, we just had an election. The Republicans crushed the Democrats. Uh, they gained 60 uh, seats in the House. Uh, they gained six seats in the Senate. They did not capture the Senate, but they did capture the House. And Obama and the Democrats received what the news calls a shellacking, which I guess is kind of a neat little word. So as a result of the shellacking, what was this election all about? Well, lots and lots of Tea Party activists, whatever the heck they are, uh, were elected. A few were not. And uh, the fact that the ones that weren't elected, that seemed like a lock, uh, weren't elected, it was a difference between taking the Senate and not taking the Senate. So uh, uh, Miller up in Alaska, uh, who uh, won the Republican nomination, seemed like a lock to get in. Uh, Engel uh, won the Republican nomination in Nevada against the uh, the uh, majority leader of the Senate, uh, who's Harry Reid and still a Democrat. Uh, she he beat her mostly uh, because uh, she was just a terrible candidate, and she was for really crazy things. And then, of course, Christine O'Donnell, who kept on saying, uh, uh, I dabbled in witchcraft when she was a uh, girl and uh, had pretty extreme views on just about everything and had a record because she'd been a TV commentator. Uh, she lost an easy win in Delaware. Consequently, what should have been 50-50 Senate is 53-47, really 46, because there's a, an independent. And uh, uh, that's the situation. So the Democrats survived 
uh, in controlling the Senate. They lost the House in a tremendous amount, and uh, they lost it because of Republican uh, energy, I guess you might say, added by the Tea Party. So uh, what is the Tea Party for? Of course, every Tea Party er, said a different thing. A lot of it is the old Republican right, which is uh, conservatism, uh, basically what we call social conservatism, which is uh, anti-abortion and things like that, uh, Christian uh, evangelicals. Uh, but there was a uh, another wing, and uh, that's partially libertarian, like Rand Paul, uh, and also some just come wacky notions uh, that the Second Amendment was meant to arm the populace against the government, that government is too big, it's too powerful, and uh, mostly that uh, while taxes are high, deficits are bad. So uh, it's kind of a mixed message. Now, which is it? Are taxes too high or are deficits too big? Uh, well, one can say, well, we can cut everything and then everything will be fine. Well, the same Tea Party people that were uh, worried about big deficits uh, were also saying that the Obama health care plan cut Medicare. And of course, Medicare is the largest uh, government program, uh, except for Social Security, there is. And also, uh, calls to privatize Social Security were pretty much uh, rejected by most of the people, even though they were supported by some of the Tea Party activist candidates like Rand Paul. So, uh, so what is the result? The result of the election, of course, is a transfer of the control of the House of Representatives from Democrats to Republicans, and uh, that's inevitable. And also, the Republicans were able to raise a tremendous amount of money. A lot of the finance industry, uh, $50 million were put in there by the Chamber of Commerce, which seems to be, in this case, representing foreign multinationals uh, and other businesses. But they seem most concerned about a tax on uh, uh, tax uh, breaks for foreign uh, multinationals and in trying to get the tax rates lower. Uh, the finances industry was in there, uh, putting in millions and millions. And most of all, and I think the cleverest people in, involved in the campaign, uh, was Karl Rove and his group, which ran uh, what they called uh, uh, Crossroads for America and a couple other uh, uh, big organizations uh, that created kind of an alternative a Republican source of funding. And uh, because the uh, Supreme Court, uh, the Roberts Court, basically said corporations and organizations are citizens and need the rights of citizens. So uh, they threw out all the uh, previous laws, uh, McCain, Feingold, and everything else, uh, controlling corporate contributions to uh, campaigns and not to campaigns, but uh, outside of campaigns. So basically, any organization could create itself with a fine name, uh, Americans for Motherhood and Apple Pie, and put as much money as they want and direct it directly against candidates. And of course, uh, here in Arizona, especially Southern Arizona, we saw uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce ads against Giffords and uh, Grijalva. We saw uh, a whole bunch of ads from organizations nobody's ever heard of, uh, some of which were kind of ridiculous and hokey, and some of which were quite effective, although those two particular candidates didn't uh, uh, weren't defeated, but many, many other Democrats were. And... Uh, Karl Rove was very disappointed because of the uh, the Tea Party powerful and uh, uh, how many uh, positions and how many uh, uh, Republican primaries were won by Tea Party activists who were not going to win. So uh, it didn't seem to affect the results in the House, but it prevented him from uh, controlling 
and from creating a uh, a change of power in the Senate. And uh, I think that that was part of the strategy. So I think that uh, uh, Rove and his guys are disappointed, and they seem to be uh, quite chagrined with the Tea Partiers. Now, uh, there was another... Uh, very important thing, I think, that was involved in this case. And this is uh, the power of Sarah Palin, uh, the previous vice presidential candidate and darling of the right and uh, of the Tea Party, if there is such a thing, although she supported McCain, who the Tea Party tried to get rid of and replace with Hayworth. So uh, uh, Sarah Palin supported a lot of these uh, Tea Party activists, so-called, uh, in these uh, races. And uh, she lost a couple big ones that uh, she supported O'Donnell, she supported Engel in uh, Nevada, uh, and she supported uh, uh, Miller. And uh, Miller ended up losing to Murkowski, who was already there. She is still a Republican uh, up in Alaska, uh, but she's a mainline Republican. And she won in a write-in vote that apparently Miller is, is contesting even to this minute. So uh, uh, very, very interesting results all in all. And uh, some important uh, Democrats were defeated in the Senate, too. Uh, Feingold, a uh, McCain-Feingold uh, uh, campaign contribution uh, controls. Uh, a lot of uh, big Democrats uh, lost their seats. So uh, now we're what's, what's happening is there is a lame duck Congress, and in the lame duck Congress, uh, the Democrats are trying to push as much as their agenda as they can during the very, very short period that they still are going to control both houses. So, uh, uh, and the other thing that's looming, and that is that the Bush era tax cuts expire by themselves. In order to get them passed in 2001, uh, the Republicans had to put a sunset on the uh, tax bill with the hope that over the period that they thought they would have permanent control of uh, the House and Senate, uh, that they would make these permanent. Well, they never did. Uh, the Democrats took over the uh, Congress in 2006, and uh, the Republicans did not extend these tax cuts permanently, which they had intended to do. So what are the results? Well, the results are that if uh, these tax cuts expire, uh, taxes will go up for the wealthy and for the middle class. So uh, uh, what are these uh, tax uh, rates? And I got them over here somewhere and maybe not. Uh, basically what we have is now 10, 15, uh, uh, 25, I think. Uh, it goes up and the, the tippy top tax rate is uh, now 28%. And I think that there might be a 33 out there. So, oh, I am, uh, no, these are not them either. Oh, here they are. Okay. So uh, uh, right now uh, they have a bunch of different tax uh, uh, rates. Uh, that start as low as 10%. Of course, the, uh, the very, very poor pay no taxes or everybody else pays no taxes up to a certain rate. So now it's 10, 15, 25, 28, 33, and 35, 35 being the max. Now, uh, if they expired, uh, there were, the 10 and the 15% people would go into a 15% tax break. The 25, 28, 33, and 35 would go into a 28% tax break. And then above 70,000 would be 31%, and above 141,000, well, no, above uh, uh, seven, the 28% would be above uh, 70,000 uh, from 31% from. Uh, to 215,000, and then 39.6%, uh, it would go to everybody above uh, uh, $385,000. So what does this mean? That means if you get a million dollars, uh, the last 615,000 would be taxed at 39.6 instead of 35%. And of course, they would average out to 26% of the total because that's the alternate minimum tax, uh, the way that's set up. So what's the bottom line? The bottom line is that people who make over 
uh, $385,000 would have a higher tax rate and uh, a much higher tax rate. The total income of those people would be about an extra $70 billion a year. The other thing that would happen is corporate tax rates would go up and uh, certain deductions would disappear. So uh, uh, I've done an analysis over here and uh, it's just uh, actually shocking how the tax receipts have collapsed. Now I've been looking in to why we have these incredible deficits. And uh, you might say, well, it's obvious, you know, we obviously don't take in what we, what we spend. And that's true. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, between 2007 and 2009, there was a reduction of over $400 billion in tax receipts. And uh, what has been driving this reduction in tax receipts. And uh, what I've done over here is I found uh, Wikipedia that obviously is based on the, the Bush uh, projection of, of uh, the 2009 uh, budget and uh, outlays and receipts and uh, what actually happened. And, and it's really pretty amazing. Uh, basically, uh, in 2008, looking toward 2009, uh, Bush thought that uh, we would receive $1.2 trillion in, in individual income tax. We only got 915 and dropping. Uh, Social Security was pretty close within $50 billion. Uh, corporate taxes went down from $339 billion down to $138, a drop of $200 billion in income. And uh, uh, the estate tax and so on and so forth uh, uh, pretty much stayed close to the same. So did uh, uh, Social Security. So uh, the result was a $400 billion reduction in tax receipts combined with the stimulus plan that uh, increased uh, costs by four or 500 billion. And on top of that, uh, we had many more unemployed. We had a higher unemployment rate. Uh, because there was a higher unemployment rate, the older people uh, put themselves on Social Security at 62 the minute they could, uh, if they could. They put themselves onto Medicare because they lost their benefits. Uh, the uh, poorer people put themselves onto COBRA, which preserved their health benefit, or had dropped into Medicaid, and all of that conspired to increase the, uh, the budget deficit. So the budget deficit in uh, 2009 $1.3 trillion. Now, the original estimate, once the uh, financial collapse happened, was $1.8 trillion. It improved $500, trillion, $500 billion, which sounds like a lot, uh, because the banks paid off their, uh, their uh, bailouts uh, to the tune of $500 billion. The bailouts are almost paid off. There'll be another one or 200 billion. Now, I personally thought that in, by 2010, because the banks were paying off their, uh, their bailouts, and uh, I thought that things would improve a little bit, uh, that the deficit would go down. But I am sorely wrong. Uh, 2010, uh, the deficit is going to, according to the estimate, uh, $1.5 trillion. And uh, one of the reasons is because the receipts are staying low. And why are the receipts staying low? Because of the Bush tax cuts. And uh, also because uh, the estate tax has gone down to zero. And while that's not a gigantic amount, that's going to be larger and larger and larger as the uh, World War II generation passes their, uh, their money on to the uh, baby boom generation. And as the older baby boomers and less healthy ones pass their uh, fortunes on to the Generation X people. So... Uh, uh, what's going to happen. So Obama uh, comes together and instead of saying, well, you know, 
if these tax cuts expire, uh, the deficit, which is a terrible problem and which was identified by the American people as a terrible problem, uh, would improve by one third. As a matter of fact, uh, the end of the Bush era tax cuts should increase receipts, according to the, uh, the uh, estimates by the government themselves, so that our total receipts go from two point one uh, trillion dollars to two point six, uh, not nearly what we're spending, but a great improvement. And uh, now uh, Obama came together and said, oh, my God, my constituency, my Democratic uh, working class and uh, middle class people are going to pay more taxes, at least the ones that are working. Uh, well, that's true. Uh, so he wanted only the wealthy to have their taxes increased. Well, that would be fine too, but that's still not enough. And uh, uh, as a result, he made a deal with the Republicans, basically, in a nutshell, uh, to completely cave in and to extend the Bush tax cuts in total for two years. Uh, so that's two years that we're not going to recover the four to five hundred billion dollars of tax receipts that would cut the deficit by one third. So uh, do we just not care about the deficit? And on top of that, he extended unemployment and he reduced the payroll tax. Well, the one thing that's been paying its way uh, for the American people in order to support Social Security has been the payroll tax. So uh, he's cutting the payroll tax, which is 6.2% by the individuals, 6.2% by the uh, companies, but who knows what the difference is. Uh, total of 12.4, he's cutting that to 4.2 for the individuals and, and leave the uh, companies at 6.2. Well, that's not really a tax as far as the companies are concerned. Uh, basically, they're paying 12.8% more uh, than that person has taken home, uh, no matter whether it shows up on the uh, W-2 as being the employee's tax or it shows up on the uh, uh, corporate uh, books as being the cor company's tax. So it's really 12.4 either way. It's not 6.2 and 6.2. So the bottom line is that he's cutting the payroll tax on top of everything and uh, putting the uh, Social Security people who are currently uh, pretty much even Stephen and, and creating deficit uh, to support Social Security as well. So uh, my opinion, it doesn't make any sense at all. So uh, we have a situation where we're increasing uh, costs, we're increasing expenditures, and we're decreasing taxes. So uh, uh, does this mean that uh, we're just going to let the Chinese foot the bill or that we're so uh, confident because we are the reserve currency that we can just print our way out of uh, every single problem? Uh, the irony is Europe is having a series of crises in the euro uh, just because small little countries are running a deficit. And of course, we're running an even worse deficit, and we have a chance to make it better, and we're making it worse. And uh, the irony about the whole thing is the Republicans and the Democrats, no matter what they say otherwise, especially hypocritical, I feel, on the Republican side, especially since they're supposedly Tea Partiers, uh, everybody is conspiring to increase the deficit and put everybody into debt. The Republicans want wealthy people to pay less taxes, but even more so, there's been a shocking decrease in the receipts from corporate tax. Corporate tax once uh, uh, received, and this is only six or seven years ago, $300 billion. Now uh, the corporations are only paying uh, $130 billion and dropping. Uh, why is that? Because of other tax breaks, depreciation. They do not pay any corporate tax at all on uh, profits made overseas. So this is, this is a giant subsidy to drive our jobs overseas and then uh, not have to pay taxes on what they make instead of having America uh, benefit from multinationals uh, that are American. 
Uh, my name is Reed Silverne. The name of the show is Fed Pride. The reason it's called Fed Pride is I'm a federal worker, retired. Thank you.